Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Chris. Thanks for stopping by. Be sure to hit the like button if you like this series. If you want to see more matchups like this, if you guys are interested in things like this, obviously drop in the comments if you have any suggestions or comments. Um, yeah, so I want to put this together for you guys. It's a really good look. It's a really good look at the 2020 Hurricanes. Great graphics. And Georgia Bulldogs. The reason why we're doing this is just because, you know, these two teams haven't faced each other since 1966. And this is just maybe it's a possible bowl game matchup. But also it's just a, a way to look at two premier programs in college football. A lot of excitement with both teams. Getting in transfer quarterbacks. Miami with the Eric King from Houston. Georgia with Jamie Newman from Wake Forest. So certainly there's a lot of excitement for both programs. It's really surprising that they haven't faced each other in so long. And, and again, just wanted to do this simulation. Show you guys a quarter. A little sneak peek of what possibly could happen in the future with a bowl game or playoff or who knows but also just you know I know Miami again Georgia's a premier program and they don't always get to face programs like this and it's just you know sometimes I wouldn't say you get old of the ACC matchups but you've seen it you've seen it plenty of times so this is something different and I again I still can't get over that they haven't played in so long but Anyways, here's a good look at Derek. He's coming out here. Um, obviously, high expectations for him for the season. I think he's a guy that can really, you know, just really lead the offense. He's got just that dual threat potential, obviously, with what he can do with his legs. But, you know, I hope that doesn't get mistaken that how good of a quarterback he is because he is a good athlete. He played receiver for a while at Houston. Slid over there, did really well, extremely productive. It's really impressive, but he's a quarterback, and, and hopefully people don't get that mistaken. Just because he's athletic and has had success at another position does not mean he's not a quarterback. So I think Miami fans should be excited about him. He's got a lot of skill and ability, and even though the wide receivers, you see him here, they're not as proven as maybe you would like going into a season. But when you have a quarterback the way that Miami does, it certainly helps things. So I think that's going to be such an asset for the offense. He's been in a system like this, what Rhett Lashley wants to run with the high tempo and spreading it out. And there's a nice catch by D. Wiggins. He's the one to watch for the upcoming year. Showed, showed flashes, good signs last year. Made progress in his development. You like all those things. You just want to see the next step with him. Has good size, 6'2", 6'3", long, and, and can flat out run. So he's someone I'm excited to see how he does. And there's a nice play, nice run by Derek. Again, talked about his athleticism. You get a glimpse of it there. But again, if you guys like these kind of matchups, Again, it doesn't have to be ACC schools. Just to see two premier programs on the field together. And there's Georgia. Obviously high expectations for them. A lot of key returners coming back. But if there's another school that you want to see, there, there's multiple schools that Miami has not faced. Oh, that's a huge... He, ca he caught that? No, he dropped it. That's a tough catch, though. Over the middle. Close look at the, the Georgia defense. But if there's another program you'd like to see, there's plenty of teams. You know, they haven't faced Michigan in a while. Texas, USC, those are three off the top of my off the top of my head. Penn State, you know, another program they haven't faced in a while. Tennessee, it's been you know, you, you can remember the Tennessee game, but then all of a sudden you think about it and it's it's been 15, 20 years. You know, so time has passed with some of these bigger programs. So I think it'd be, I think it'd be cool to, to see, you know, Miami. Obviously, Miami is scheduled to face Alabama in the 2021 opener. Stuff like that. I think people get excited about it, regardless of what the results are going to be. Obviously, Miami lost a tough game to LSU a couple years ago to start off the season, but I think you can respect the fact that they're they're facing big time programs, and I, I think it's cool for everybody involved. Here's a look at Miami gets stuffed on third down. So they're going to punt the ball away. Again, only doing a quarter of this. It's a look for both teams. Shout out to Georgia fans for stopping by. 
You guys got to be excited about Jamie Newman there. Miami fans have seen him. If they paid attention to the ACC, obviously they, they don't play Wake Forest very often, but, you know, Jamie Newman has a lot of ability. He's someone that a lot of people are excited about taking that next step into a bigger program, higher profile, and he'll be looking to have a big season, elevate his draft stock and things like that. So it'll be interesting. Again, both these teams with big-time quarterbacks with transferring. And it, it really just makes a huge difference all the way around with the offense when you get a guy like that with a lot of ability. And again, just to look at the team, it, again, you get a, a look at the graphics. Hopefully people can, can appreciate the, the work that it takes to go into the, a game like this, a, a look like this. So, And I wanted to make sure you guys got a good look at the, the as accurate of depth charts as you could do. And obviously there's going to be a little bit of discrepancies, but again, just to give you guys a look. It's a nice tackle. Newman gets out and run, but Miami makes a good stop stop on uh, forces the third and short. And you guys see Avery Huff in number 10 jersey. Obviously, he wears number 9. There's a little bit of an issue sometimes with the double numbers. But yes, I know he wears number, number 9. And he's someone to watch for this year for Miami. There's a big run. White steps into a lead role most likely this year. But yeah, tons of ability, obviously. But yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see how the season shakes out for everybody. Miami in the all green uniforms. You're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. They'll look to throw here on first down. Quick hitter here. It's complete. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. There's a look at Quincy Roche, number two. Another transfer that Miami fans should be excited about. Highly productive last year. He's going to step in there. He's getting a little fired up here. That's good to see. So, but yeah, again, tons of ability. You guys know about him, obviously, from Temple. It's a nice ta tackle by Patrick Joyner. Again, just a, a number of guys stepping into larger roles in 2020. Patrick Joyner's looking to do that. Obviously, with Quarterman and Pinkney gone, there's going to be guys stepping in a linebacker. I just mentioned Avery Huff. Zach McLeod is going to take over as the leader of that group. But guys like Huff, Sam Brooks, you know, Pat Joyner's trying to keep his name in the mix after being hurt most of last year. But, you know, I think Sam Brooks is the one to keep an eye on in terms of what he did in the bowl game with the 12 tackles, led the team in his first start, only started last season. And while people might be excited about Avery Huff, certainly there's ability, certainly he has speed, but Sam Brooks is ahead of him, flatly. With what he did last year, the playing time, the experience, and you got to figure, at least heading into the season, he would be ahead of Avery in terms of that depth chart with those two players. But again, a lot can happen in a season. And one of the things that, that defensive coordinator Blake Baker said recently in interviews, just kind of listened to him because I asked him about Avery and Sam. I was very curious what he thought of them in terms of their progress. And, and again, both of them had different seasons last year. But one thing he said about Sam was just that he's kind of coming out of his shell a little bit, um, showing a little bit more personality in team meetings and things like that. And while it might not seem like a huge deal, and certainly there's more to being a good player than how you act in the meeting room. To me, it shows a player that's that's being more comfortable. Being more comfortable in college with his role, with how he's playing. All of those things make a difference. Essentially, you want players to, to have confidence. 
And I think those things that once you start seeing a personality, once you start seeing them open up, those kind of things, at, at whatever level it might be, some players are, are quieter, but as long as they're comfortable in, in being who they are, I think you see those things translate onto the field. And I think that's a good sign for Sam. Again, you're, you're taking small tidbits of a spring ball that was you know cut short. They only practiced four times, and all four were in the same week. So certainly it wasn't a huge, um, you know, tons of examples of things. But again, with that, but they've been doing Zoom meetings and things like that. So things in a way uh, have still continued and they're still getting to know their players as they continue to evolve. There's Zach McLeod, number 53. So Georgia's on the move. I haven't talked too much about Georgia here. On this drive, Miami's had a few stop, stops. But Georgia's just keeps moving, so it'll be interesting. So down in the red zone, if Miami's can, get, can keep them out of the end zone. Again, only doing a quarter of action. You want to come away with the, the short little uh, lead, I guess it would be. But again, it, this is just a simulation to show you guys the team, the rosters, the graphics just appreciate for what it is and if you guys like these things again drop in the comments if you want to see different matchups if you if you like this video hit the like button if you haven't done that already it's definitely appreciated it helps oh my gosh i thought he was going to score but it helps the channel it helps other people see these things um that, that's why those things the interactions is, is so important and it's definitely appreciated, guys. I really appreciate all the support when we do the when I've been doing these simulations, the the video game series, and things like that. And if you haven't checked those out, I'd recommend the NCAA Football 14, the Dynasty with the 2020 rosters. We're doing well. We're off to a four and zero start. Again, playing on that Heisman mode is no joke. But but yeah, that comes out every Tuesday. So definitely hit that up. Going in depth with recruiting on Thursday. So. Just to recommend, if you haven't seen kind of some of the series going on, that's the first one I'd recommend. Third and goal. Oh, huge tackle. Quincy Roche. That's a big play there. Obviously, this isn't, there's not huge stakes in this, but I know if you're a fan of either of these teams, you want, you want your team to come ahead at the end of the first quarter. Whatever it is, I know you're competitive. I still cannot believe these two teams haven't met since 1966. They've actually played 12 times. And I want to say the first one, and I could be, I know they started in the 30s. So for a while there, there was a decent run of games getting it. It might have been even late 30s. But, anyways, they were facing one another quite often. And it just, it's just so surprising that. Two teams consistently in bowl games haven't at least ran into each other there. Obviously, with the location, you would think maybe a, a non-conference game would pop up. And obviously, the biggest tie these two teams have is Mark Rick, head coach of former head coach of Georgia, former head coach of Miami, played at Miami, was at Georgia a long time. And then they they uh, they often often uh, compete against, against one another for recruits. So that's a big tackle there. But yeah, both programs are aware of one another. So here we go. We got Miami back on the field. They're down 3-0. 132 left from the 27. They don't know they're getting cut off after a quarter, but you'd like for them to have a sense of urgency, go into this two-minute offense and move the ball downfield, maybe grab a field goal before the before the action takes a quick halt. And who knows, maybe you guys want to see the whole game, but again, I just want to show you guys a sneak peek. Get a look at these teams here. And Hard Rock Stadium looks great. You know, typically with football um, uniforms, I'm not a huge fan usually 
of matching uh, pants and jerseys, to be honest with you. But I think this one looks good. I think the all greens look good. Maybe it's because the helmet's white, so it offsets a little bit. But I'm okay with this green on green here. Oh, that's a tough incompletion there. Just two for five. Slow start for Derek. And yeah, if you guys haven't seen the Derek King face of the franchise series, check that out as well. Got a minute left here. Third and nine. Key play for the Hurricanes. Oh, nice play. Again, D. Wiggins. Those two have been developing a, quite a connection. They've been working out together lately in the offseason, so you know they want to try to have that chemistry. Again, I really believe in D. Wiggins and his development. You know, his ability is there, and he's continuing to progress, and I th you like to see that. I think he could be in store for a big year. Just that, that size speed combination you love having that on the outside as a receiver now a first down carry for Harris. and King wants to air it out you know just because you've got a guy that can run a little bit on the perimeter get outside get behind the defense you got to have a quarterback not just able to throw it that there's a lot of quarterbacks able to throw but the willingness it's a risky pass at times but just to have that confidence and Derek has shown that, showed it in college at Houston. He, we saw it in the spring briefly. So, so yeah, maybe you guys, I know you guys would probably like to see this continue. Miami's on the move here, but this might be the last play of the quarter. Again, I'm glad you guys are stopping by. He's upset this is ending, I know. A little huddle here. Maybe they're going to get a playoff. One last play. Maybe you guys want to see him go deep. But yeah, definitely appreciate you guys' support for stopping by. This is this is great. Here we go from the 44. Oh, he doesn't get it off. How disappointing is that? Hey, it is what it is. I know Miami fans are thinking they would have scored a touchdown right there, and they probably would have. So there we go. Sneak peek. I appreciate everybody that stops by. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter at Inside the U. And be sure, as always, to follow and go to InsideTheU.com for all your coverage of the Miami Hurricanes. And thanks again for watching.